Hi guys, welcome back to Foliage Loft. My name is Liam, and today we're going to talk about the easiest of the easy plants, snake plants. So if you have a hard time keeping your house plants alive, uh, don't worry, I have four perfect solutions for you. Now before I get into it, if you guys could please hit the like button on this video and subscribe to the channel, that would help out a lot. I'm going to show you guys four different species of Sansevieria, or snake plants as they're commonly called. And not only are these plants just amazing pieces of decor, they look amazing in your home, um, but they're actually also incredibly useful as well. NASA a few years ago actually did a study on this. Uh, they looked at a whole bunch of different plants and tried to figure out which plant was the best at removing volatile organic compounds from the air. Uh, they're called VOCs for short and they're basically just uh, pollutants in the air uh, that are not good for you. Snake plants were some of the best performing plants in the study and they're pretty amazing being able to remove uh, pollutants like benzene and formaldehyde out of the air. So not only are these plants super easy to take care of, they're actually going to take care of you a little bit as well. Uh, they all have very similar care requirements, so I'll wait until the end of the video and I'll quickly go over the care requirements then. But first, I want to show you the amazing variety that you can find within this plant family. So first up, and I think the most unique looking snake plant out there, this is the African Spear Plant. And the botanical name for this one is the Sansevieria cylindrica. And I'm a big fan of kind of creepy and weird looking plants. Uh, so this one is right up my alley. And I think this plant is really cool looking. It kind of has a bit of a tentacle look to it, kind of reaching out from the deep. It's pretty neat. Uh, it's a great conversation starter. And I think this plant will go along great with pretty much any style that you might have. Um, but I think it looks especially good with um, modern, mid-century modern or like a Scandinavian kind of style. I think it fits right in. This plant I have here is still fairly young, uh, less than a year old I would say, uh, and the longest stalk here is probably about 10 inches long, um, but these can get quite big. Uh, given enough light and enough time, uh, some of these stalks can grow several feet in, in length and they can become quite thick over time. And some of the leaves do have some of this uh, banding that you'll see on other snake plants as well. Um, but as this plant matures, it'll kind of lose that banded uh, look to it and some of the bigger leaves will end up just being kind of all one color. And if you're shopping for one of these, you might see uh, they're pretty commonly braided together. Um, so you can get kind of a cool looking pattern. Um, I think it looks pretty cool when they're braided, but I also like this kind of wild and crazy look because they can kind of grow wherever they want. And if it does get out of control, uh, you can kind of tie some string around here to kind of keep them contained. Um, but for now, this one looks really good just as it is. The Sansevieria cylindrica is very simple to propagate um, if you're just patient enough. Um, it'll just multiply and create pups inside the pot itself. Um, so you can see in some of the shots here, I do have two of these plants. Um, I did originally just have the one in the one pot, um, but it was getting kind of crowded, so I did separate them. And if I keep waiting, uh, more shoots will eventually come up and I can separate them again and just keep on creating more and more of the same plant. Uh, just one tip, if you are going to propagate this plant in that way, uh, we just be careful when you're removing them from the soil. Uh, they can be pretty fragile and they can snap. Um, so when you are removing them, just be pretty careful. So that's the first plant for today, uh, kind of a fun and wacky one, the Sansevieria cylindrica, or the African spear plant. And the next Sansevieria plant that I want to talk about is the Sansevieria moonshine. This plant, as you can see, has a, kind of a ghostly, pale, otherworldly color to it, uh, hence the name moonshine. And as I mentioned with the last plant, the Cylindrica, um, I really have a thing for kind of weird looking alien plants, and I think this one's like right out of a sci-fi movie. So this plant might not become quite as large as some of the other snake plant varieties that are out there, um, but you can still expect this one to grow to at least two feet high. Uh, the pale color is more pronounced on the new leaves, so you can see this is the newest leaf right here. Um, and it is definitely the palest. As the leaves age, they do um, kind of darken a little bit and they do get some of this kind of banding pattern that you will see on other snake plants. And this traditional snake plant kind of shape, it already has a really bold uh, look to it, like a, kind of like an architectural look. It looks like a kind of a modern piece of art. And uh, I think the pale color just adds to that. I think it looks awesome. And I think one of the great things about snake plants overall is that they tend to grow just vertically straight up. Um, they don't really branch out or get too wide. Uh, so if you are in like an uh, apartment like me or you have a small space that you're dealing with, I think snake plants are a great idea because um, they really are self-contained. They're not really going to be much wider than the pot that they're potted in. And I've actually heard lately that this plant is getting kind of hard to find. I was able to find it at just a, like a local grocery store. I think I paid $10 for this one. It's pretty cheap, pretty affordable. Um, but yeah, I guess they're 
slowly becoming more uncommon, which is kind of surprising. Uh, it seems fairly easy to grow, but I guess they are kind of slow growing. And I think obviously with the quarantines and lockdowns, there's been a huge demand for a lot of plants. Um, so hopefully as things return back to normal, um, hopefully these guys will become easier to find again. And that's the second plant for today, the ethereal Sansevieria moonshine. And next up, I have the largest snake plant in my collection, the Sansevieria xylanica. So I think uh, xylanica is a pretty fun name for a plant. I always appreciate a good plant name, and so should you. Um, yeah, it just sounds like something out of like Game of Thrones or something. It has a kind of a fantastical name, which I really like. And these are really affordable too. So I think for this one, I paid about $25, uh, which for the size of the plant, uh, this one is, I'd say about two feet tall. Um, that's actually not a bad price at all. This plant has a common name of bowstring hemp, um, so it's clearly it's not a hemp plant, um, but it's kind of used in a similar way. Uh, where this plant is found in the wild in India and Sri Lanka and other places in Asia, um, people will actually use this plant to create items like cloths or mats um, or bowstrings, like the name suggests. And I think the dark coloring of this plant is what really sets it apart from some of the other Sansevierias. Uh, so you can see it's got this dark banding pattern on, on the leaves. So yeah, I really like the dark, kind of mysterious look about this plant. So I do keep this plant in my living room right next to my TV stand. And um, it kind of sits there on one side and I have a Monstera adansonii on the other side. So those two plants kind of flank my TV. Um, and I think it's just a really cool kind of design piece. I do have it in a raised plant stand uh, to give it a little bit more elevation, um, but it is one of the first plants that you'll see when you enter my home. And just like all the other sensitive areas, uh, this one is just so, so easy to take care of. Um, so I definitely recommend it to all you plant newbies out there. And finally, we have a plant that I've showcased on this channel before. It was one of the plants in my work from home office plant video. Uh, if you haven't seen that one, do check it out. Um, but this is the Sansevieria trifasciata or the Dracaena trifasciata, depending on who you talk to. And it's also commonly referred to as the mother-in-law's tongue, or it's just also generally referred to as the snake plant. So you can see on the outlines of the leaf here, you get this really beautiful kind of golden, creamy, yellow color. And then you also get the kind of dark banding that you would see on the Zeitlandica as well. So you kind of get the best of both worlds with this plant. And obviously the pattern on every single leaf is a little bit different. Um, so you can see on this one here, you kind of have this double band along the edge. Um, so every single leaf that this puts out is gonna look slightly different, which is really cool. And again, similar to the Zeitlandica, uh, this one can grow really large as well. Um, Obviously, given the right conditions, it's going to need a lot of light, the right temperature, um, but these can grow up to eight feet tall in a greenhouse or outdoors. Um, indoors, they probably won't get quite that big, um, but you can still expect them to reach three or four feet indoors, uh, so they can get quite large. So I actually bought this plant as a gift to my girlfriend, um, and this is before I was even really into plants. I think this is like the second plant that we ever got for our apartment, um, so I got it for her for Valentine's Day. and. The, this piece right here, these two leaves, um, were the only part of the plant when I bought it. And since then, um, it's been about two years, it's grown these additional three stalks. Uh, and these stalks are like almost twice as big as the original one. Um, so I expect the next few that'll come up will be even bigger. So those are the four snake plants or Sansevierias that I wanted to talk about today. Um, I think they're great plants and I would definitely recommend them for someone who's first getting into house plants, just because they're so easy to take care of. In terms of watering, uh, in the summer, I would water these guys, but once every two to three weeks. Um, they do require a little bit of extra water in the summer when they're growing. In the winter, I do go down to watering these guys about once a month, and they seem to be perfectly happy with that. Now, in terms of fertilization for these plants, you wanna be really light-handed. Um, so I'll only fertilize these guys once or twice a year in the summer. Now, in terms of lights, um, they will survive in just about any lighting situation. They're that easy. Um, but if you do want them to grow, you will have to provide them with some bright indirect light. If you do put them in a darker spot in your home, you're probably not going to see much growth. Um, they'll be just fine, they'll survive, uh, but they're not really going to grow for you. And humidity is just not an issue whatsoever for these plants. Uh, they do grow in some arid environments in the wild, um, so they'll be fine in any kind of household humidity, whether it's 20%, 40%, or 60%, um, they'll be just fine. Temperature is probably one of the few things you actually want to worry about with this plant. Just keep it away from um, your AC vents or like a drafty window. Don't put it by a door that's going to open a lot in the winter. Um, they are a little bit sensitive to the cold. They do naturally grow in a warm environment, um, so just make sure they stay warm. I think one of the very few things that these snake plants are particular about is the soil mix that they're living in. 
Uh, so a standard potting soil might be a little bit too heavy, a little bit too dense and hold on to too much water for these plants. They are a little bit susceptible to overwatering and root rot. I have my sense of areas in a mix of coco coir and pumice and they do seem to do really well in that mix. Uh, it's well draining, it's airy, uh, they do like that. But yeah, just make sure the plants aren't sitting in uh, wet soil for too long. That's going to wrap up the video for today guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch. See ya.